No. Are you kidding me? Oh. Like a good savior, Jesus is there. Oh. Hey, what's up, Taylor? Jesus. What's, what's going on? What are we doing? Uh, I need some toilet paper. What? Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah, it is. Weird. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Okay. Hello? Hello? Jesus? What? What? What the? What the heck? No! No! Hey guys, welcome to Raw TV, Real and Willing Television. I'm Amanda Button. And I'm Taylor Wilkerson. Tonight's episode is called Christians in America. We're going to be talking about loving God and loving our country. We're talking about following Jesus and being an American. Yeah, it's going to be a really good show, guys, so make sure you stay tuned. Today's episode is going to be a very different one than other ones because mm -hmm. we're talking about being a Christian in America and the truth is, is that Christian culture in America is really weird sometimes. So yeah. most of us grew up in the church, right? So like yeah. what are some like weird examples of like some Christian culture in the midst of America? <laughs> Christian music, for one, is so bad. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's so bad. It's just so, so bad. poorly produced, poorly written. I mean, great yeah. message, but just not a little what cheesy. You're, exactly. Yeah. Always like a little the pop cheesy. music, not the worst. The worst music's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about pop. The pop music, like right. not to. I'm not gonna name drop, but no, we all can think that. of those like bad bands, girl mm -hmm. bands we listened to that were Christian. Well, yeah. how about the Too people much. that like actually try to create music <laughs> that's identical, maybe one beat off from like secular hip hop music? It kills me. They change a few. Words. The lyrics, it yeah. drives me nuts because then I'm actually singing the old school lyrics and I'm like, yeah. yeah. Also, like, I've Sorry. only ever heard Christians say the word fellowship. Like, we're gonna go have some fellowship. That's true. Like, if you're just like a normal person, you're like, we're gonna hang out. But, what like, if you're like a Christian, we're gonna have some What's fellowship. Yeah. Even so churches have like a fellowship hall. Yeah. Yes. The whole church is a fellowship building, but they have a hall designated for fellowship and coffee. Yeah, it's funny. Which I like that part. It's so. funny. That's true. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I feel like there's a lot of like, Christian these like words and like things that we well, like, do like yeah like like Christian words like like for some reason like we all say like oh that's so like we're all overly excited about everything like in our Christian culture like <laughs> oh it's so exciting you killed it and like we use like very like weird like positive. terminology for like positive things but we say like really bad like words like like man you slaughtered that sermon bro you, <laughs> you never killed that offering that. and Actually, like like we know that's true. it's really weird like even if they why didn't, like, do we do that if they don't that's even do crazy. good that they're like oh man that was that was Fire, bro. That was like, bro, keep it was fire. On. We're just so cool. We're optimistic. Yeah. We're so cool. Um, have you guys, taking it a little bit different now, have you guys mm -hmm. noticed though, like, I feel like it's becoming more difficult to be a Christian in America? Have you guys yeah. noticed that or experienced that at all? Absolutely. I mean, anybody willing to put up a fight against you loves that. They love, yeah. oh, you're a Christian? Cool. What do you think about this? Mm. What do you think about that? They want to yeah. test you. Exactly. Oh, yeah. well, oh, so you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. but you think you're a Christian. Something yeah. I've noticed in the media especially is I feel like Christian is the one religion it's okay to make fun of. Yeah. Like, unless you're on, like, South Park because they make fun of everybody. But, like, I, I feel like you can't make fun of Muslims. Like, that is horrible. Yeah. And people would be highly offended. But, mm -hmm. like, I feel like in the media, I see Christians get made fun of all the, yeah, time, all the time. Or portrayed as a really bad character. Like, they're mm -hmm. always the jerks on TV. Yeah. And, like, hypocrites and that kind of thing. Yeah. So I just, like, I find that really interesting that that's how we're portrayed. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but, like, for me, it's really bad, like, when it comes to social media. Mm -hmm. Like, Facebook. Like, if you post something like or if you see someone comment something about anything from gay marriage to abortion or anything that um, can really be argued and you try to state something you know with your beliefs as a Christian you get hammered yeah you get everyone's asking you questions and me personally I'm not ready to answer like throw some you know Bible verses at him and have that background so like I just choose not to comment on yeah. that you know because like, it's like mm -hmm. even so in like hard. social media with like minor things like instead of seriously putting yourself out there as a Christian like we subconsciously kind of like 
altar saying that we're a Christian. Like yeah. if you go to people's about me in Facebook and instead of saying they're a Christian, it'll say follower of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine, Mine says, says like lover of all <laughs> things he I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I don't want to say Christian because everyone's like, oh, she's a Christian. My yeah. yeah. space is like Jesus is my homeboy. Yes. It's yeah, like yeah, so, that was a big one. We That's old school. I think yeah. it's become so hard to be a Christian in America that we can't even say we're a Christian yeah. in America on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I think that the, just the crazy. word itself has a lot of negative connotations yeah. to other people. Like to me, if you say you're a Christian, I'm like, that's awesome. Why but like to other though? people, it's negative. I, I don't know. It's hard to get yeah. support almost. If you are, like you're saying, say something Christian on a social website, uh -huh. then there's so many people willing to go against you and support the other side, but mm -hmm. your fellow Christians, I feel like, aren't supporting you because they just rather stay quiet mm -hmm. than get in the middle of it. <laughs> exactly. that, that's me. Like, I see that yeah. stuff all the time, and I'm like, what? what is even the point of arguing about exactly. it on Facebook? Like, because people are always like... I feel like they're more likely to like say mean things or like like they we wouldn't have this conversation in person. You wouldn't be this exactly, like forceful yeah. and rude towards me. But behind you know? the computer, exactly, they feel like they exactly. Have boss. Yeah, I think wow. that's a big deal. I hate so. that. Do, do you guys think there are any like fr like frames of thinking or philosophical differences between being an American and being a Christian, or being of any uh, nationality and being a Christian? I think there's a lot of things in our culture that go against being Christian. Like we talked yeah. in one of our other shows, like instant gratification. And a lot of times, like, you know, the Bible talks about having patience. It's a yeah. virtue. It's yeah. love is patient, yeah, you know? Our culture promotes that. Exactly. Our culture is That's all true. about that. And our culture is all about self-serving. What's going to benefit me yeah. instead of serving others. Exactly. I feel like serving others is not something that's promoted no. in our society in at all. I think a lot of Christians actually fall victim to uh, the thinking of like pursuing the American dream. Yes. Yeah. You know Your I mean? dream. Like, like, like the, yeah, the American dream is like, like get a family, like do, do well, become super yeah. wealthy, and die old, and but with three kids mm -hmm. and a picket fence and a dog. You know, like <laughs> yeah. th th that's not what it means to be a Christian. No. But like sometimes it's like there are things like that that it means to be an American is to pursue those kinds of dreams. So I think yeah. there are some differences, and we'll talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think something important to like talk about is what role do does being a Christian like play in politics? Like, do we have a role in politics and that kind of thing? That's and a it's whole something other thing. I know it's something that we definitely need to talk about yeah. in our next panel. But right now, we're going to throw to Word on the Street with Taylor. I absolutely love living in America. There's so many beautiful things about our country, and I absolutely love all the diverse people. So today, I am in downtown Lakeland, Florida, to ask others on the street what they love most about being in America. I'm Taylor Murray, and this word on the street. What is your favorite thing about living in America? Being able to be free and do what you want and as long as you're within the law, within the law of course. But that's my favorite thing. Freedom. You can do just about anything you want to do and you can get ahead if you want to work hard. I like the opportunity that uh, we're afforded here. What opportunities have been presented to you? Well, to myself, um, growing up in a household with uh, factory working parents, you know, I've been able to um, succeed in business and, uh, you know, move up the corporate ladder, if you will, and, um, you know, move into management. And it's something that, you know, a lot of people don't think it's possible, but if you work hard, it is. The freedom that you have and being able to eat hot dogs whenever you feel like it. Amen. Freedom. And you? Freedom. Now, a lot of people are saying hot dogs. Is that one of your favorite things about America? Well, it's the freedom to choose which hot dog you want to have. That's, that's the great thing. Freedoms that we enjoy that are guaranteed by our Constitution. Uh, no other country is like us. So even with all our failings, and we have a lot, uh, this is the best country to live in. It's, you know, it's really dear to my heart. The one thing that I love most about living in America are the freedoms that our forefathers uh, carved out for us and the fact that we can uh, worship God here in America without uh, condemnation and without uh, uh, criticism uh, from our government. Well, it's hard to narrow it down to one, but our founding fathers gave us such a framework, uh, a wonderful framework that they were able to come up with that has been able to serve us well throughout our history. I have memories of being a child during World War II and grew up being very patriotic and knowing at that time that everybody else was behind our war effort, our peace efforts, and um, 
I try to instill some of those ideas in people younger than I that didn't have that privilege of the feeling we had during World War II supporting our troops. There are so many reasons to love living in America, and I'm so glad that I get to call it home. Thank you for that word on the street, Taylor. You always do such a lovely job, and I always look at doing it. Um, OK, so at the end of the last panel, kind of switching into the discussion of Christians in politics. So yeah. what role do you think that Christians should have in politics if you think they should have any? Hmm. Blank, just, you know, open question. Well, um, as Christians, I believe that we have great moral values and a great understanding of um, the human life mm -hmm. and where we are, uh, where we should go and how we should be used. And I think that if you're able to, as a politician, spread the word and let people know that you're doing good things in the government and passing laws for the better of society as a Christian, that would be awesome. But mm -hmm. people yeah. feel, I think, in any religion in the White House or in politics, you're pushing your, mm -hmm. your thoughts on them. Yeah, I think that being a Christian isn't just like, okay, being a Christian is who you are. It's not something you can separate yourself from. Like, I serve God. Mm -hmm. That affects yeah. every single thing I do, and I believe that it should. God should lead me in everything I do. So I'm not going to force people to be a Christian because we do have the freedom of religion, and that gives me the freedom to be a Christian. Yeah. So, but um, I'm never going to do anything that I think is against the will of the Lord. But, but is voting for something that is your own personal moral? and making it a law is, and, and voting that in, isn't that forcing them to be a little bit more like you? Isn't that forcing well, them? Let me give like a specific instance. I don't think, I think that if a woman wants to live in a life of prostitution, I think that's wrong. She has that choice. It, I mean, it's illegal. She has that choice though to pursue that. But me thinking that that's a sin and that's harmful for her, am I ever going to vote for a legislation that makes prostitution legal? No because I think that's harmful for her. Yeah. So yeah. is that me forcing her to not live that life? I don't know, but I, I'm not going to like want to legalize that because it's a harmful lifestyle. And that's mm -hmm. why we put those things up for vote. So that way you see what across the board, what everybody thinks. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be Amanda's vote. It wouldn't be necessarily her making a difference because yeah, maybe one voice makes a difference, but at the same time, it's not, you're not going to make the final say. Yeah. It's the majority. It was one vote that changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not really likely to happen. Yeah. But actually yeah. W w what is pretty outstanding is that the majority of Christians who vote, they actually all do vote one way. It, it, it's, that's true. it's a very large majority. It, the truth is, is, uh, doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, you're a Christian, doesn't matter if you're a Republican, you can be a Christian, like they're both Christians. Yeah. Yeah. But a majority of Christian voters are Republican and, and, and they completely vote one way. And I, I think some Christians uh, probably don't do enough research sometimes. I, I, th I think they're, they're most of the time right, sometimes they're a little bit wrong. And, and I, think, uh, I, I think there are people that are part of certain parties and believe certain things that are Christians that actually feel secluded and pushed away from the church and actually look down on for their beliefs. And that's where I think Christians have to stop doing that. I think Christians have to stop like saying stuff like, oh, you're not a Christian because you vote that way. Yeah. And, and I've heard that said. I've heard like Republicans say to a Democrat, yeah. mm -hmm. you're not a Christian if it's you do that. So and I've heard mad. Democrats say to Republicans, you're not mm -hmm. a Christian if you believe that. So well, I, I think that's a huge factor. Clearly that's not like the right mindset or mentality yeah. to have. Like yeah. pushing people away is never the right choice. We're supposed to love it. And disagreeing, I think this is a big lie that our culture believes, disagreeing on beliefs does not mean that you hate that person. Like, I yeah. really wish that we could, like, root out that lie because I believe it's something that our society's clung on to. If mm -hmm. you disagree with someone, you hate them, and that is simply not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My question is, is why is it so cliche that, not cliche, I shouldn't even say that, but why do the majority um, of Christians always claim to be or are Republicans? Like, because I feel like so many people go based off of, um, you know, whether it's, uh, not believing in homosexuality and abortion. Those are like two main causes mm -hmm. what determines like, you know, I'm a Republican because this is what Republicans believe. But why is that though? Like, why do you feel like, why do you, why um, can't Christians be Democrats? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I think can. there's a lot of Christians who have this mentality. They can't, but why isn't it? A, you I think know? a lot of Christians have this mentality that they want to 
they save America for God. They want to take back America for God, you know? And I can't think of a worse thing that could ever come out of someone's mouth. I want to take back America for God. Like using politics and using the sword. Yeah. Like, like uh, I believe that Christians are called to be peacemakers. They're not supposed to use the government for, to their advantage. Jesus never uh, got involved with politics ever. That's true. They, they actually wanted, the Jews actually wanted Jesus to be a politician. They wanted Jesus to come in and be their king and, and take over and, and fix their problems politically. And if anyone, like if any nation was ever considered God's nation, it was Israel. Yeah. And Jesus, the Messiah, came in and even he didn't get involved with politics. Even he didn't try to use politics to save the world. He, he used love. It, it, see, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world are two very different things. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of Christians are very confused. Um, I get that, but I think that we all have very different callings on our life. And what if someone literally feels called, like, I'm supposed to be in politics. I want to run for Senate. And they're a Christian. Like, I, I feel like if that's their calling, clearly the Lord is putting that on their heart for a reason, and it is to make a difference. Martin Luther King, wasn't he a, a pastor? Yes. <laughs> and he was trying to, he made some changes in government, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and he had an impact. But it's, but it, it's different. Going for justice for a, for a people, for a people that are neglected and on the out hinges of society, like black people were back in the 40s and 50s, that's a completely different topic. We're talking about right. treating other humans with equality. We're not talking about turning America into a Christian country using politics. They're two very different mindsets. So uh, all people are, Christ, all Christians would agree that all people are created equal. Mm -hmm. all, everyone has the image of God on their life and, and that's what makes them unique. And that's how we need to treat everybody. But we don't use politics to force our beliefs down people's throat. How do you feel about the fact that um, our country, the United States, is founded on Christian morals? And that in our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag that we all said and learned in school says, in God we, or I'm sorry, I Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States. <laughs> to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Yeah. And I mean, and also on all of our currency, it says, in God we trust. Yeah. Hey, and they don't so, say what God though, do they? <laughs> Angie. That's another story. <laughs> that's that's exactly too mad does. about the idea of us taking that, that phrase off of the coin. How mad would that make you guys? That would make us really and mad. And God we that trust. If they took that off, that, that, Jesus would, that, we trust. that would take everyone off. But we, see, we get a little bit more mad about that than we do about advancing the kingdom of God. It that, doesn't that, say in who you trust. It doesn't say in what you believe. In God we trust. Because that is what we were founded on. We are getting that all over the place right now. <laughs> but we got to go to top ten right now with Phil and Andy. Hey guys, I'm Phil Bellamy. And I'm Angie Q. This is your top 10 Americanisms. Starting off at number 10, Thanksgiving. We're the only ones that celebrate it. For good reason, too. That is true. At number nine, we have barbecue, because why stay clean when you eat? <laughs> number eight, John Deere. Uh, nothing runs like a deer, the good old tractors. Ain't that the truth? At number seven, for all you cowgirls out there, cowboys. Number six. <laughs> Number six, the Home Shopping Network, my mama's favorite show. Why leave home? True. At number five, fast food. Oh, like McDonald's. No, like Chick-fil-A. Oh. Number four, Levi jeans. Because they're quality. never too tight. Yeah, and they're good quality, right? Sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. Being own that any. tight. And number three, guns, because you can never have too many. Yeah, you crazy. Number two, muscle cars, the good old Camaro and Mustang. Mm, that's what's up. And at number one, fried chicken, because everything's better in fat. With some hot sauce. Well, that was your top 10 Americanisms. I'm Angie Q. And I'm Phil Bellamy. All right, thank you guys. Although I'm a little interested that why apple pie wasn't on the list because I think Where's that's baseball? pretty American. That's you. Anyways, I'm offended. Okay. Anyways, okay. All right, guys. Works. So I have a question. What are what are some situations that we need to put God above country? Can you guys think of anything? Any situations? All situations, our whole life, right? I mean, that's very cliche. Right? <laughs> yeah, every situation, Jesus yeah, first. Think. But really, yeah. you know, like like we are Christians before we're Americans, you know. And, and no matter where our politics ever take us in life, we need to always remember that God comes first. If, if at some point America somehow goes south and it, it becomes illegal to become a Christian, which is not going to happen, but if it did... You know, like, we're Christians first every single time, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. whatever that might look like, I don't know. But, like, I think there's times in our lives where we become persecuted. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's like peer pressure. Whether it's serving country or other man, it's, 
you got to make sure you serve God first. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think when it comes to being patriotic, sometimes people are over patriotic, where yeah. they are just so focused on their country that they're not focusing on the world. And I mean, there are billions of Christians, I assume. That was an assumption. That was a made-up statistic. All over the world. And so, you know, there's a lot of Christians all over the world. So we really need to, like, think worldwide and think global and just love on everyone. I mean, we can't just focus on our country and think that America is the savior of everyone. One thing I just thought of, like you're saying, when patriotism takes over is kind of um, like... Osama bin Laden was somebody that as a country we were trying to bring to justice. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, do you feel that that same justice would have been carried out the same way? No. Mm -hmm. I think it's completely wrong, actually. They, but were yeah. they really trying to take him out for justice, or were they just trying to put him down? Well, they were him. trying to stop somebody who was obviously wreaking havoc on the world and uh, killed many Americans. And yeah. as Americans, we wanted to see justice. Just, yeah. Most yeah. Americans wanted to see justice. But is justice killing him? Like... Well, that's I, where it, and, and, and that's the good question. Like, see, I would say no. I would say justice is not killing someone. Uh, the kingdom of God is not like the kingdom of this world. That's the bottom line. The kingdom of this world is very different from the kingdom of God. There of are course. there are little things like I don't know, like an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. That's very like people across the planet think that if you do something wrong to them, I'm going to repay you back with the same punch. Yes. Jesus is very different. Yeah. Jesus says you turn the other cheek. The, the, the kingdom of God is is. Peter, put down your sword. It, 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 they're very different. So the, the idea of uh, going into war even, and I know that you were in the military, but, but like, I think killing is just always wrong. Like no matter what, even if, if they kill your family, your friends, you don't respond in evil. You don't kill them back. I mean, Jesus obviously didn't. The, the, the first two centuries of the Christian church didn't either. And that's where I think it becomes very different from being an American, being a Christian. And that's when you have to become a Christian first, I think, at least. What about when you're defending your family? Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. I know that Jesus has turned the other cheek, but if I'm literally, if I were to watch a kid and a man is coming at a child with a gun, like, what am I going to do? I'm going to protect that kid. Like, Absolutely. Even yeah. if it means taking out that dude. Like, yeah. I, I just I'm don't not, understand. I understand. And I mean, Phil, you know, like, I just am really interested in your perspective because you did serve this country and you did go into Afghanistan. So I'm really just interested to hear. And your perspective the, uh, on that. Obviously, that was a choice of mine yeah. at that time in my life when I felt the military was the best thing to do, and it absolutely brought me to where I am and made me the man I yeah. am. And I wouldn't change a thing in the world. But at that time, that was my occupation. That was my job was to lead Marines into conflict, into battle, yeah. to be in the middle, and. At that time, that's where it was kind of, I was still a Christian, obviously, and I, um, but that's not what was first in my head. What was first was protecting my friends, mm -hmm. was protecting what was ours and being safe. And yeah. that kind of took presence over necessarily my morals. You know, here we are questioning somebody who is an insurgent and we're trying to get information. Well, what are you willing to do? to get information. You know, do my Christian morals fact come into play or is it my training that comes first? That's hmm. like, that's an wow. intense situation. Yeah. But you know, I think if we all look at our careers like and, and what we wanna do in life, like that's a constant thing we're gonna face. Yeah. Like, am I a Christian first or is my job coming first? And like, it's a constant conviction we're gonna have. I'm trying to think of some examples, but like being a doctor, for instance, mm -hmm. like when do you, uh, allow being a Christian doctor, a Christian practicing medicine, when do you choose to be a Christian over medical practices that really don't line up with your faith? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. I, it is it's hard. Thing. I feel like with everything that you do, whether it's school, whether it's your family, whether it's going into the career, whether it's even when it comes to your views uh, politically or whatever the case may be, I feel like there's always a way that you can integrate your faith because your faith makes you who you are. Yeah. It gives you your morals, it gives you your beliefs, and it gives you what you value and what you don't. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there, in anything you do, you have to. So being an American, you can be a doctor and be a Christian. Yeah. Should I be a doctor to perform a surgery if they cry and be like, well, you go to a better place, it's all right, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, if the whole organs are collapsing, like, I still preach to them if I can <laughs> you got to and you yeah. know? what if you're yeah. praying with your patients you know people exactly. going through chemo and cancer or yes. very horrible things yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think you might have it rough you want to go into film one mm -hmm. day and I can't think of anything mm -hmm. harder for a Christian going to film I mean they're gonna the ask you to they do would things ask you. exactly yeah. that and, and that's you're something that to say no to at least that's that something that I have to like let my personal convictions and what the Lord shows me like show me the right decisions because I mean in Hollywood like yeah the some of the biggest roles 
portray things that conflict with my personal convictions. I have a question. Yeah. What if you were offered a million dollars for one movie to play the girl that's being extra in the exorcism? Would you do it? I wouldn't. Amanda I would be scared to do I that. would be scared. <laughs> she would I'd be, be so scared. She'd be scared. That's crazy. And I wouldn't open this myself up to that. I would not open myself up oh. to that demonic because you're, activity. Exactly. Because your beliefs. And, and like your even the even the secular atheists that made like the exorcism of Emily Rose, they actually believed that they had created a demon on set. They believed that a demon was on their set and they actually called a Catholic priest to bless the set to get rid of the demon. And that's so, where like a creepy and, priest movie came from? I don't know. Do you know. remember that one? No. But no. like I'm just saying like even people that didn't even believe believe in the spiritual realm like felt like, felt like there was a demon on their set. So I would never open myself up to that. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> like I just think that's so wrong. Yeah. I don't wow. And I think movies. as Christians we have that choice when we go into our occupation and our calling as to whether, you know, what are you going to be faced with? Yeah. yeah. And in our daily life, really, when we're with our friends, when, when, when we're being offered things to do, when we're being tempted, we have to always choose Christ first. We always have Amen. to choose our relationship with the Lord above everything, right? And yeah. Amanda has a Bible verse I do. for it's us right today. Here. Because it's in the Bible. <laughs> she loves the Bible so much. Okay, guys, in Matthew 6, 24, it says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will, de or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And that's Jesus talking right there. Mm -hmm. you can't, red letters. You, 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 yeah, red letters. Mm -hmm. You can't serve two masters. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Any, anytime you choose sin over Jesus, you're, you're serving a different master. Whether, whether it's giving to peer pressure, whether it's temptation, whether it's like conforming your morals for whatever beliefs are being pushed on you, like you're serving another master. Yeah. So let's just pray really quick that the Lord would strengthen us not to do that. Does that sound good to you? Sounds cool. Please. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. God, I pray that you just empower us by your spirit to be strong, to only serve you, to stand up for what you believe in, God, to, to treat others as equals and to love all people. God, I just pray that we, we would only serve you, our one true master. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you guys so much for talking with us. Thank you guys for watching. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion, make sure you hit us up on Facebook, tweet at us, send us an email, and as always, don't forget to live, live it raw. raw. Yeah, Delayed clapping. Yeah. Also, I didn't realize it was up in the rafters. Yeah, I, didn't, so. I did not know where I was going. And I'm still horrified by Taylor's size. Really <laughs> Loving. What we, what, what, why? I get nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous right now. I've never done this. We're gonna go to top 10 right now with Greg and Andy. Uh, oh, Phil. Greg! Oh no! It's not Greg! It's not Greg. I've been doing this a lot today. We're gonna right. cut that. Okay, cut. What am I saying? It's on you. Hey guys, I'm Philly B. Oh, <laughs> okay. I said Philly B. Recap. My bad. <laughs> Was that okay? That was alright.